The news comes first on Channel 3. Now, you've heard that statement many times. Well, very shortly, the news will not only still be first, but many segments will be in color. Now, how would the news look in color? Well, watch. This is the sound of news. From this tower, 1,549 feet in the air, Channel 3 spans the length and breadth of Northern California to bring you the fastest, most complete news coverage in this area. Hello, I'm Mike Boyd, welcoming you to the news portion of KCRA's Colorama. Has television news always seemed to be the quiet corner in your TV viewing? Well, not anymore. The 25-man crack news team at KCRA truly lives up to its motto, the news comes first on TV3. Channel 3 takes you out of your home and places you where the action is actually happening. It's been said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and certainly the visual element is a vital part of any news story. But a picture can only set the scene of action. It cannot analyze, define, nor clarify. News in depth requires more than just the visual concept. A concise word picture must be accurately displayed as well. With such a large, diversified team of newscasters and commentators, plus the award-winning news of the NBC television network, headed by David Brinkley and Chet Huntley, it's really no wonder the news comes first on TV3. But there's more to news coverage than simply the news of the day. For news is a continuing story. News events play upon one another in an evolutionary pattern which tends to set the trends and patterns of history. On a worldwide and national level, these events will be explored through the NBC White Paper series, Project 20, and the Huntley Brinkley Report, in addition to news specials when and where they happen. Regionally, however, KCRA television will be on hand to try to investigate some of the continuing stories, problems, and possible solutions. Those events, which are so easily overlooked, yet so important to Northern California's continued growth and advancement. For a report on some of the areas that we'll be making in the news in the weeks to come, here's KCRA newsman Don Oliver. In a matter of days, Valley residents with the rest of the nation will vote in the general election. We will cover that event, its results, and their significance, just as we have provided a balanced portrayal of the campaign that is now drawing to a close. The visits of Lyndon Baines Johnson and Barry Morris Goldwater were given the full treatment by KCRA News as were the day-to-day -day pronouncements, charges, and countercharges of candidates prominent only on the local level, sometimes wild, but always rewarding. Politics and politicians are a daily diet for Sacramentans, and they have been since the city became the state capital in 1854. KCRA newsmen are well known in the Capitol halls and know well the importance of legislative affairs which affect every one of us. But the vision of KCRA News is not obstructed by the city of Sacramento. It takes in the accomplishments, undertakings, and problems of the whole valley, the East Bay, and Sierra. The strain of urban growth detracting from the beauty of Lake Tahoe is only one of many regional topics under constant discussion. That there is confidence in the future growth of Sacramento Valley commerce is typified by the vision of community leaders who fought so long for the port of Sacramento. Its worth still remains to be proven, but its growth is of major concern to those who look toward Sacramento's future. One of the most heated debates of recent years has come over Sacramento's airport facilities. One faction contends that municipal airport is sufficient, but nonetheless, a $14 million jet age airport is going up in the Natomas area, backed by those who foresee expanded needs. Sacramento's requirements in all fields must be met by its youth. Some 22,000 students are now in area colleges, and education has a story to tell of progress, buildings, and new methods. The conversion of American River and City Colleges to the Los Rios District is just one of the continuing events. We here at Channel 3 News are quite excited over the increased amount of time and talent being imparted into our news department and we're looking forward to meeting the challenge of presenting you, our viewers, with the widest range, most comprehensive coverage ever attempted on this local level. We'll strive to give the fully enlightened citizen of Northern California an even greater insight into the goings on in the world around him. Until then, this is Mike Boyd for KCRA News.
And now for the entertainment section. For this, we felt we needed a big network star as a guest. But where could one be found in the Sacramento area? We knew that this section of the show could not be a success without a big star. So we had to find one. To do this job, we hired one of the top men in the business to find Mr. Big. You've heard of the man from Uncle? Well, we hired the man from Aunt. Not an ordinary name, but I'm not an ordinary guy. But I think it'll look pretty good on a tombstone someday. I was hired by Channel 3 to find some big name network talent to use on this color show. After all, what good is the entertainment section without a star? I had to find Mr. Big. First stop was the Tropicana. What was monkey? Was this the secret organization that was trying to stop me? The fog had rolled in and was as dark as the inside of a chow dog's mouth. I hauled hips inside to catch the action. This was just one of the places where the surf dancers hang out. A beautiful girl at a nearby table lamped me and immediately sent a waiter over to ask me for a dance. He wasn't a bad dancer either. enjoy myself. This was a business expense. I searched the dance floor, hoping someone from NBC would be here. The dancers remained strangely quiet to my inquiry. And then a lush fell over the stage as the girl in white got up to surf. I watched her as she danced, which was an easy thing to do. The way she moved reminded me of ball bearings in a jar of meat. This was the dance craze that was sweeping the country. It was very artistic. It was the art of pulling your feet away before your partner could step on them. Their feet really moved. What a way to stamp out forest fire. As I studied the dancers for an NBC star, I realized that none had appeared on the telephone hour. Some of the tables were reserved, but the customers weren't. They were wearing their clothes out from the inside. I scanned the combo, and I came to the conclusion that Andy Williams and Perry Como was not among them. To be or not to be, should I be a dancer or remain seated? And then I recognized the boss from Monkey, the secret organization. He wasn't easy to spot in the crowd, but I recognized him by his long arms. Stop, Cleopatra. It seems like I had heard that name before. The neon lights reminded me of smeared grease paint as I stepped inside. I could feel danger and intrigue everywhere. Maybe Liz and Richard would be here. And now here's our featured attraction, Miss Sandy Marlowe. Uh... 
nothing could deter me from my mission. I knew I was as welcome as candy in a diabetic ward, but I tried to remain as inconspicuous as possible. blonde at a nearby table informed me Mr. Big had been here but had left for Tahoe. I thanked her for her information by purchasing her a now big order. Here's our turkey's delight, Miss Ann Ames. all day. I returned to my room. I wondered, what would my idol, the man from UNCLE, do with a case like this? The thoughts went on and off in my head like lights on a pinball machine. I decided to look through the pictures of NBC personalities. Who would I find? Would it be Betty Stanley, the lovely hostess of Valley Playhouse? Perhaps Jonathan Winters. His specials are on Channel 3. This mysterious-looking bellboy, Jose Jimenez. Harry Martin one of my favorites, who hosts the early show at four. Perhaps these three rogues that are seen on Sunday night. Or maybe this man. His eyes were like buttons on a pair of Levi's and the same washed out blue. Maybe he is Mr. Big. I had to relax. The next evening, I arrived in the Tahoe area. First stop, the South Shore and Harris Club. If an NBC personality was around, he or she would be here. The elevator beat my stomach down by three lengths, but it was worth the trip. The show had already started. would be a perfect opportunity to listen at the dressing room doors for familiar voices. I had a mic with me just in case I found Mr. Big. Got to find some big stars. Wait a minute, I hear some familiar voices in there. Some really big stars are in there, I can feel it. Now, what's going on out here in the hall? I'm finally ready for our show. Now, what, what is it? What, what, what do you want? Well, the voices... Well, I can't talk to you now, but I'll see you next week for Royal Instant Poppy Sheep. You know, that voice was very familiar. I wonder if he's the big star I'm looking for. I can't nail it down, though. Ed Sullivan doesn't look like him, though. I know there was some other voice in there I heard, I'm sure. Well, what's going on out here in the hall, kid? I'm trying to get ready. I got a show to do. So listen and listen tight. We play all your movies on our channel. You're very big. That's about the size of it. We played that one, too. The Searchers, you remember that. Let's see. They just don't look the same, though. They sound the same, but they don't look the oh, same. for heaven's sake. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to get ready for the show, and all, I'm, all these interruptions. What, what's going on? He looks like Mr. Big. You're a big NBC personality, right? You're going to be on NBC in the fall. I know, but it costs me a nickel every time I want to get into my own dressing room. What? My gosh, that's the man I've got to find. But wait a minute. He doesn't look like any of them. What's the name here on the door? Rich Little. It's a strange yes, name. Yes, uh, what is it? I go, uh, yes? There's what? three guys in there that look exactly like you. 
They're Ooh. big name stars. Really? Yeah, there was Ed Sullivan. Is he in there? There's nobody in there. Uh uh. John Wayne was in there. Really? And Jack Benny. Oh. How about uh, Kirk Douglas? Is he in there? I don't think Kurt's in there. No. Do you want me to take a look? That's it. No. Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you on TV. Your name's Rich Little, right? Right. Although I'm not rich and I'm not little, but uh, it's really me. I see. You've hit the big time. You're at Harris Club now. Yes, I'm with K-Star, and that's that's big time. Mm-hmm. Uh, how'd you get all these impressions? What, listening to the radio in the old days? I'll tell you, and as Jack Parr would say, this is true, I kid you not. Actually, I started <laughs> imitating teachers at school years ago. Mm-hmm. Where are you from, by graduated the graduated very early, and uh, mm, I'm from, from Ottawa, Canada. Mm-hmm. This is where I was born. Mm-hmm. Paul Ankaville, as we call it. I now. see. This is where Paul comes from. And you imitated the teachers? Imitated the teachers, graduated early, started <laughs> to... Um, uh, increased the list to add movie stars and then politicians. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then I went into radio for a while. Oh. I was a DJ. Mm-hmm. Started at the bottom. And uh, let's see, I was making more money actually uh, doing impersonations as a hobby than I was in radio, so I decided to switch. Were you in radio in Canada? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who was the first impression you did? Uh, James Stewart or Edward uh, G. Robinson? Uh, no, the first voice was Jimmy Stewart. I remember coming home one day and asking my mom for a piece of apple pie. That's the way the whole thing's born. Well, my first was Edward G. Robinson. Yeah? I want to yeah, th- we'll keep your mouth shut, see? <laughs> I want right. to thank you a lot, Rich. You're doing great. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Gee, just think I did this interview for nothing. I had run out of funds and returned to Sacramento. I entered my bank and immediately was invited into the vault to select new bills. I insist on being up to date. In fact, my gun isn't a 45, it's a 64. When I went into the vault, there he was, Mr. Big. Uh, this is TV's 39-year-old entertainer. Well, Mr. Benny, you're our Mr. Big for this entertainment section of the show. And what this is actually is a promotion stunt for your NBC show. Now, what do you think of this great promotion bit we've got going here? Well, I I never feel that promotions have done it. I think either the years, uh, I think either the shows do it, the spot that you're in does it, who's opposite you helps or hurts, or who's ahead of you and in back of you. I think uh, the uh, the only real great promotion that we did was when we had the uh, the party at the Automat for me to give a party uh, for black tie at the Automat in New York. Now that was a promotion that was well worth doing because that caused a lot of talk all over the United States. And, uh, but I think everything else depends on your shows more than promotion. I think on your shows, on your opposition, and on what you're following. We've been running uh, many of your uh, motion pictures on our many theaters like uh, Valley Playhouse and the early show and Three Star Comedy Theater and Cinema 3 and CPM Theater. How do you feel about seeing your old pictures on television? Well, I'm kind of glad that they're showing them because I've talked so much about The Horn Blows at Midnight because I didn't like it. That a lot of people don't realize that I have made some very good movies. You mentioned the, uh, To Be or Not To Be was probably one of the best comedies ever made, not particularly because I was in it. No matter who would have been in it, it would have been a great movie because it was a Lubitsch picture. So uh, now, of course, uh, pictures that were made 25 years ago, they don't always hold up. Now, I have a few that do, to be or not to be. George Washington slept here, Charlie's aunt. Uh, Some of those movies, Buck Benny rides again. They hold up today. They're still good movies. You'll notice I mentioned the early show uh, just a moment ago. Uh, What do you think of Harry Martin? Harry Martin? That's you, isn't it, Harry Martin? I think you're nuts. (laughs) Well, sing, Dennis. Our thanks to Baritone Solo for tracking down our guest star, Jack Benny. You know, KCRA-TV was first with videotape and also first with color in the Sacramento Valley. And they have now completed arrangements to score another dramatic first. In the near future, Channel 3 will be able to provide live color telecast to Northern California. Yes, we are receiving two color cameras. Now, color set owners in the past have been able to receive only filmed programs, and the programs, both live and film, originating in color from the network. 
Well, the new dimension of live color exclusively at Channel 3 will add many additional hours of local live color to the 40 hours already scheduled by KCRA and, of course, the many local movies which appear often in color. Now, supplementing Channel 3's live color cameras will be three additional videotape machines with color capability, which will enable you to view delayed color events as well as live specials. New modern color film equipment will be added, and when operated in conjunction with the live color cameras and KCRA's existing color equipment, clearer, sharper color film pictures will be transmitted to our viewing audience. Plans are also being made to procure additional remote television facilities, enabling Channel 3 viewers to witness events and sporting contests in the area without leaving their sets. Yes, Channel 3 continues its impressive string of firsts. First with videotape, First with color, and now first again with live color. We certainly hope you enjoyed this evening's program. Good night.